The 9600 GT used to be one of my favourite cards when I brought one a few years ago, but now it's 2020, so let's see how time has affected this card. The GeForce 9600 GT was released in February 2008 by Nvidia. It sports a 650MHz core clock and a memory clock of 1800MHz. The card we have today is the PMY variant of the card which has 512 megabytes of video memory, which is GDDR3. There were some cards that came out with one gigabyte of VRAM, but they seem to be more scarce than what they used to be. Surprisingly though, this is the exact same card I had around four years ago. The card also requires a six pin power connector and only requires a 400 watt power supply. So most systems should be able to accommodate this card nowadays. The only downside to this card, and it's a big one, which is it lacks DirectX 11 support, meaning we're only going to be playing DirectX 10 games and lower, which is a shame as it makes the card a lot less usable than what it was a few years ago in terms of gaming. Anyway, I switched out my GTX 570 out of the test system and installed this much smaller 9600 GT. Our test system today is a Q6600 at stock speeds, 7GB of RAM and 500GB 7200RPM drive. I know from past experience that this card was often paired with a Q6600 or vice versa, so this gives us a realistic benchmark but the card is pretty overkill for the system. First off I tried out general web browsing, first up was YouTube which loaded fairly quickly but the strange thing that I noticed is that it was fine watching 1080p as long as it wasn't at 60fps. However, this can be easily solved by installing the H.264 Chrome extension where you can choose to block 60fps YouTube video and it will make playback on this card a lot better due to videos being streamed in the H.264 format instead. Next up was Footbin with all of its graphics again which loaded fairly quickly with little to no lag or stutter. Finally, on the web browsing front was Twitch, which again loaded up fairly quickly and had no problem playing 1080p 60fps Twitch streams, so again a great result. However, how does this card do in some games? First game up was Sonic Mania at the highest settings, as there really isn't much to choose in terms of settings on this game, at the 1080p resolution, which we saw an average of 60fps, a 1% low of 58fps and a 0.1% low of 49fps. So pretty decent for a newer basic game. I believe there's a frame cap on this game as well of 60fps, which is why you don't see any higher, but as you can see there, was, there wasn't many drops on this game, so the game is definitely playable on this card. The next game up was GTA 5, as this game still supports DirectX 10. We set the game to the lowest settings and try 1080p resolution to start off, which gave us an average of 22 FPS, a 1% low of 1.9 FPS, and a 0.1% low of 0.9 FPS. So as you can see, we sort of hit our limit with the card at 1080p. So I decided to put down the resolution to 720p, which netted us a better average of 35 FPS, a 1% low of 4 FPS and a 0.1% low of 1 FPS. So much better result, but with stutter and lags at some points, which is probably down to the drivers not being optimised for the updates that have came out since 2014, which was when the card received its last driver update. But I think if you tweak the settings enough, you'll be able to get this game playable on this card, bearing in mind it's at the lowest set possible settings and at the 720p resolution. Now I did try some of other games, but due to this card's lack of DirectX 11 support, they just won't open, as they don't have the feature set to run the games. Fortnite began to load but then froze for a long time and then finally gave me this error message. Now Fortnite did used to have DirectX 10 support up until last year at some point I think when it was removed. I also tried Dirt Rally 2 which we've been testing it a lot lately 
and I had the same error message, but it came up a lot quicker than the Fortnite one. So has this card aged well? No. A few years ago, maybe even a couple of years ago, this card struggled in fairly recent games it could run at the time, and since the removal of DirectX 10 support from most games, it has been the final nail in the coffin for this card. Now don't get me wrong, this card is great for general web browsing, YouTube, and will be great for someone who is going to use it for some retro gaming, but as a budget graphics card to run semi-recent games, it just won't cut it in 2020. Thanks for watching, 